everyone! Today I'm going to be colouring a page in the book Phantomorphia by Kirby Rosanes. I really really love his drawings, they're amazing, they're so much fun to colour. I have quite a few of his books but this one was a fairly new one and I thought today I'd do this beautiful skull and butterflies, so let's get into it! I'm using Prismacolor pencils from my large 150 set and for this one I've tended to group colours into threes and on the left hand side you will see the colours that I've used for the skull and I will also be showing up the colours for the different butterflies as we go along. So if you want to use the same colours please feel free to go ahead otherwise use any colours you like if you happen to have this particular drawing or you might like to use this colour combination for a completely different drawing that's fine too. And also don't worry if you don't have these exact pencils you can use any colour pencils that you have. I'm just using the Prismacolors because I find that they're fantastic in colouring books. They're very waxy, they're very pigmented and they're really really easy to blend and they just go down so smoothly so I really love them for that. Okay I'm going through and at the moment I'm using my very darkest pencil in this group of three, my darkest purple, and I'm going over the shadow areas which Kirby Rosan is very kindly has drawn in so it makes it a lot easier if you go over the lines that he's hatched in. These indicate the areas of shadow and I usually go in with the darkest pencil first so this seems to be the logical place to start. I find if you use three pencils it's good to have a dark, a medium value and a light value and then they work really really well together. They don't all have to be the same colour so for example you can see here I've got three purples at the moment but in the end I actually got rid of that middle value purple and used the dark purple, the light purple and then you'll see the other colour that I use which is the lightest colour that I did for the skull. For most of the drawing I did use three shades of the same colour but on the skull I just thought it might be nice to just vary it up a little bit. So here you can see I'm using the lighter lilac to go over and I'm leaving little spaces of white here and that's because I want to add a third colour in. You could leave those spaces white and use white as your lightest value, that's completely fine too. It's completely up to you, there really is no right or wrong when it comes to colouring in. It's supposed to be relaxing and enjoyable so don't get stressed out too much of it, you know, it's not the most perfect thing in the world. I find that colouring in is actually an amazing way to learn how to use colours and think about colour theory, colour combinations and it's an awesome way to practice without feeling like you've drawn this picture for hours and then you colour in and stuff it up. No, this way you can start off with a design that's already there and not have that stress. Alright, so here's my third colour. It's actually a very very light powder blue and I found that the blue mixed in very very well with that lilac just to give almost like little blue highlights imagining if the light was hitting the skull and it's usually you're not going to have all one colour, you're going to have slightly different colours in the spectrum. So I found that this was quite a nice combination. They're obviously very very close to each other on the colour wheel, being that blues and purples are right next to each other, so that's going to work pretty well. On to the butterflies. I started with a darker blue here, you can see the colours that I've used, three different shades, going in with the mid-tone colour here and then going in with my light tone. Now there were a lot of butterflies and I did not plan this out. I originally thought I was only going to use a few different colours like maybe a couple of different blues but you'll see that it completely turns out in a totally different direction and that's fine. But what I did was I picked my first three colours and I just went through and coloured a handful of different butterflies around the picture and then you'll see that I go in with some more colours and again and again and I really just went by instinct as to which butterflies to colour at the time so this is by no means organised or planned. I generally don't plan colours when I start colouring, I just like to go with the flow and see what comes out. Because I've been doing art for a number of years 
I have an ingrained knowledge of which colours tend to go together and I do have my favourites which I tend to use together on a regular basis but I do try to change it up as well sometimes. So I'm going through and I went around the edges of the butterflies with three more colours and these ones are aquas so they're close to the blues. I was going to go contrasting so maybe like do an orange tip but then I thought I wasn't too sure which colours I was going to use for the whole drawing so I thought no I'll stick with colours that are very similar to one another and then it'll be a lot easier to work out what my other butterfly colours are going to be. So I'm just working with the dark, the medium and the light aqua colours and just going around the edges of these butterflies that I've done. I really like this combination. To think that I'm using six colours per butterfly, I'm really glad I had 150 pencils and I did use quite a lot of them in the end. Okay, now I've gone on to magenta colours, pinks and magentas. And I've got the three there. I really like this combination of colours. I really love that process red especially. But this is an excellent combination if ever you want to use it is the mulberry process red and hot pink together they look awesome so I'm going through once again just picking up butterflies as I go trying to kind of keep them sort of separated from each other so that when I finish the piece there'll be a lot of different colors together and I won't have the same colors right next to each other it was pretty tough because some of those butterflies are tiny and fiddly and not all of them worked out necessarily quite as well as I hoped. Now because there's a lot of detail in this drawing and I was just far too impatient to do every single little segment of their wings, I mean ain't nobody got time for that, I basically have just kind of sketched over the lines with the dark and then the medium and the light. So you get the idea that there's detail there but I haven't done every single piece. If you want to do every single piece, by all means go ahead, but I had to film this video and get it out on time, so I really didn't have the luxury of that time. Around the edges of the pink butterflies, I decided to go with peach and salmon tones. Yeah, these ones are maybe just a little bit dull on the screen. They look quite nice in person, but they're a very, very subtle colour, and obviously all three colours are quite light, so it's still quite difficult to get a dark, a medium and a light, but I did my best with the colours that I chose and you do see the subtleties in the final drawing. I've posted up the high resolution scan of this picture on my Instagram page and you can find the link in the description below. Now I'm going on to green, which looks quite different from the blues, pinks and purples that I've already had up. This is where I started to go off on a colour tangent and you'll see by the end just how much of a rainbow it ends up being. But once again I'm using three greens, a dark, a medium and a light, and I'm going through the same process as I went through with the blues and the pinks, just randomly choosing butterflies that look like they might work well in this colour. I actually really like these three greens together, they're very vibrant, they're really pretty. So we're just colouring in up the top. And another one here. I think this one you can see the dark quite well. And then I just went over them again a little bit. Now I went around the edges with much lighter greens, so a lot more yellow green, that chartreuse colour, and these turned out nice and brightly. I've been colouring for a number of years, and I even go to an adult colouring group which meets up once a month, and it's totally free and it's a really nice way to socialise and chat with other people who enjoy colouring just as much as I do. We're a bit loopy, but I think Colouring in is such a nice way to relax and just not think about anything. I love it so much. I'm going in with some darker reds here. I decided I needed to have a bright red in this. 
I was thinking I wasn't going to, but I ended up with red because it's one of my favourite colours and I just can't help myself. So you'll see these ones are really, really vibrant and I'm pretty much filling in the entire rainbow here, as I very often do. But there are so many colours to choose from. It's very, very hard sometimes just to go with a limited palette. Sometimes I just want to use all the colours and make it bright. So that's what I'm doing in this one. I think I mentioned before that I've been colouring for a number of years. Make that pretty much most of my life. I mean, you know, like when you're a child you colour in, but I never really grew out of that and I've always spent time colouring things in. So when the adult colouring craze came in, you can bet I jumped in with both feet. <laughs> so now I'm going around the red butterflies with, you guessed it, orange. I find reds tend to all look very, very similar to each other and it can sometimes be hard to get a lighter red. So that's why I went with the orange on these ones. And I think there's even a bit of tendency towards yellow. But these ones were pretty fiery and I think they stand out quite nicely. So the last ones I think I went for were the yellows, of course. And these were all very light colours, starting with the warmer sunburst yellow, going in with that really solid canary yellow, and then the lightest colour is the lemon. So that was quite a nice combination. These butterflies are lighter than all the others, and they do kind of go a bit too close to the white of the paper. But that's pretty much covering the whole rainbow spectrum here, so I'm happy with that. Now around the edges of the yellow butterflies it was pretty hard to go very much lighter so I've just gone with more neutral sand and cream colours to go around those edges. The yellow ones probably weren't my favourite just because I haven't really got that nice gradient from a darker colour to a lighter colour. It's all quite similar but there you go. And I went back with just some darker blues. I hadn't used these ones before, but I just felt like I wanted something that was in between the blues that I'd already used and the purple of the skull. So one of the colours here obviously is indigo, which is right next to purple. And I went around with the more purpley blues. And I've picked a few butterflies here. If you're a beginner at colouring, it can feel sometimes quite daunting as to which colours to use or even where to start. And quite often people might say just start with a 12 set of colours. And that's all well and good, but for what I'm doing here, I've used far more than 12 colours. And I would recommend perhaps purchasing a much larger set if you can afford to do so. Well, really the biggest set that you can afford is always the best way to go in my opinion. Have more colours than less and then you've got lots to play with. Oh yes, this little bit was driving me nuts so I finally got my black pencil out and coloured it in. And then I wasn't entirely sure what to do with the rest of these butterflies. So now I'm actually going in using reverse colours. <laughs> so exactly the same combinations of those six colours but the ones I used on the outside are using on the inside and vice versa. And I'm doing some aqua ones with the blue on the outside. And it just made it look like they were different coloured butterflies even though I was using the same colour palette. I just coloured in slightly different areas. So as I was saying, if you get the bigger set, then it becomes much easier to group colours into sets of two or three and you can create a piece like I'm doing here. Now, when it comes to pencils, I recommend a lot of colors because you do find that it's not always easy to mix them together. It depends on the type of pencil you're using. But if, for example, you're using watercolor paints, you don't need to have as many because you can mix a lot more out of them and far more easily. Although if I'm perfectly honest, I also have a lot of different colours and watercolour paints too. But that's just me. I like to have options. Okay, going in with more pinks. I really like that combination. And this was another one with the peachy colours on the inside and the pinky colours on the outside. 
so I think they look quite different. And in all honesty, I was starting to run out of colours that would be suitable for butterflies, those bright colours, and I would have had to have gone into the earth colours and I wasn't too keen to do that. Really, if I'm going to colour in butterflies, they're going to be very, very bright. To be honest, I'm not that much of a fan of colouring in butterflies, but for whatever reason, I really liked this picture. I think it's because I really like skulls. And I, of course, picked the most complicated one to do because this took ages. As you can see, I'm going in with those chartreuse and lime peel colours and the darker greens. And these ones look like the Australian colours, which is it's green and gold. So there we go, some Aussie butterflies for you. <laughs> and yes, I think some more green up there. I think I managed to balance this drawing out quite well. I didn't have too many of the same colour bunch together. Although I think it was inevitable that there were going to be at least a few that were similar. But that's okay, it's a colouring book. It's not my drawing, this is somebody else's drawing, so it's not like I can exactly sell it because this isn't my work. Yes, it is my colouring, but I don't think I would feel right selling somebody else's colouring design, even though I'd coloured it myself. That just doesn't seem right to me. One of these days, I'm going to design my own colouring pictures that will be entirely drawn from my own mind and then I will colour them and then maybe I can sell them then but until then this is for fun I just enjoy colouring in and it's a pleasurable pastime I'm kind of hoping actually to finish this entire book over this year but we'll see how we go I'm sure in future videos you're going to see more from this book it's quite easy sometimes to film this because I just set my camera up and put it onto time lapse and then I can just colour. You'll see t times when I've actually forgotten that I was filming and the book has been moved a bit out of frame so I do apologise for that. That's because I've gotten into the colouring zone and I kept forgetting to check the camera and the position of the book. Because I naturally tend to move the book around to get the angle more comfortable. I had a few butterflies left and I was stuck, so I went in with black and silver. And I've never really used the silver pencil out of the Prismacolor set, and I was quite surprised at how shiny it is. Because sometimes when you use a metallic pencil, they're just not shiny at all. They're... But this one was really lovely and you can see it on the camera and everything. So that was quite nice, the black and the silver combination, and I'm definitely going to use that again. I went in with some purplier colours just to kind of tie them in with the skull, although I made the mistake of colouring the butterfly on the skull purple against the purple skull. Yeah, really clever, Rebecca. But never mind, it's not the end of the world. I think my pencil broke just at the end there. And I totally didn't see that snake until right at the end, so here I am colouring that in. And then I decided I just wanted to go over some of the really dark parts of the skull with the black pencil just to make it a lot more contrasting and to get those much darker values in. So I think it really, really set the skull off at the end. It looked a lot better. The dark purple that I'd used was just not quite dark enough for it. So you can see I'm going and colouring the shadows of the butterflies and some of the details there. And then I went through and coloured in the bodies of the butterflies, it was the very last thing I did. And that is almost it. Actually, there was one last thing, and that was that playing card. And it's done! I'm finished! Thank you so much for watching. This is the final drawing. I really hoped you enjoyed it. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. I'll swatch you later!